What if I told you that one day you won't need a text, talk, or even move to communicate with someone? You could literally become Professor X from X-Men. Hey guys, it's Anj, and welcome back to another Tech Talk. Today we're diving into one of the wildest, most futuristic topics I've ever come across. Brain-to-brain communication, or as I like to call it, neural airdrop. It's literally just your thoughts hopping over Wi-Fi and landing in someone else's head. Are we unlocking the future or opening the door to a brain hacking disaster? Is it a game changer or a brain changer? Let's find out. So let's break it down. At their core, brain computer interfaces or BCIs are systems that enable direct communication between the brain and an external device. It all starts with recording brain activity. These signals, like electric spikes or oscillations, are generated when neurons fire. In non-invasive setups, we use EEG to capture them. But for more precise readings, especially at the neuron level, researchers use intracortical microelectrodes, which are tiny implants that sit right on the cortex. But raw brain signals are messy. They're full of noise and irrelevant features. So the next step is cleaning them up. Using signal processing techniques, we isolate just the useful patterns, like a brainwave signature or a spike train. Principal component analysis, or PCA, is often used here to extract the most meaningful features. Once we have this cleaning data, machine learning takes over. Algorithms like support vector machines or key nearest neighbors analyze the signals to decode what the brain is trying to do, whether that's moving a hand or just thinking yes. And we're not stopping at traditional ML. Deep learning models like CNNs are being used to capture more complex, time-based brain patterns, pushing BCI accuracy even further. And finally, once the brain's intention is decoded, it's turned into a digital thought signal and transmitted wirelessly using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. On the other side though, the receiving end uses computer to brain interface or CBI tech to receive the message from the primary brain using magnetic fields to activate specific brain regions and focus ultrasound, which can target deeper areas in the brain with higher precision. In 2023, researchers at Duke University created a system where two rats could share information between their brains to solve different tasks. That's pretty wild. But now many companies are jumping into the effort. Let's talk about Neuralink. Elon Musk's goal is to build a brain chip that connects your thoughts directly to a computer and eventually to another person. Their chip, the N1, uses ultra-thin electrodes that are inserted into the brain by a robotic surgeon. In 2024, they made headlines by implanting the chip into a human for the first time. The user could control a cursor with their mind and even play video games. It is early, but I find that absolutely insane. Imagine doing your homework with just your thoughts. Next up is Synchron, another rising star in the BCI space. Unlike Neuralink, Synchron takes a less invasive approach. Their device is delivered through a blood vessel in the neck, and it ends up resting in the motor cortex of the brain. There's no open brain surgery, no skull drills, and way less scary. Another company is Kernel, which is building sleek wearable headsets that scan brain activity using near-infrared light. No implants needed. There's also Meta, which has dabbled in thought decoding experimenting with ways to turn brain activity into text. Like always, there are some major challenges ahead. Brain-to-brain communication might sound amazing, but it also brings some serious problems we have to figure out. First of which is privacy. This tech can literally read your thoughts. That means your private ideas, feelings, and memories could be seen by others. 
on purpose or by accident? What if someone could hack into your brain the way people hack phones or computers? The other issue is security. If people can send brain signals to each other, we'll need strong protection to keep that information safe. Right now, our regular internet security isn't good enough. We'll need better tools to stop others from stealing or changing what's in your mind. The other big question is the ethical concern. Who owns your brain data? If brain-to-brain communication becomes real, your thoughts could be recorded, stored, and even analyzed. But by who? Imagine if companies could track your brain activity the way they track your clicks online. They could learn what grabs your attention, what makes you anxious, or what you secretly want, and then sell that info to advertisers. We have to ask, who gets to use this data? How is it protected? And most importantly, do you get a say? There are some solutions though. Startups are designing chips that process brain data locally, so it never leaves your device. Basically, you own your brain data. We're now seeing brain level cybersecurity. Yeah, like antivirus for your mind, designed to access your brain data. Think firewalls, but for neural interfaces, blocking unwanted signals before they even get close. And of course, encryption is key. Your brain data stays locked down and unreadable without your unique code. Right now, brain-to-brain communication is still in its early experimental stage. But let's be real. The speed of progress is insane. What feels like sci-fi today could be tomorrow's group chat, just without the phones. But before we all start syncing our minds like shared Google Docs, we've got big questions to ask about privacy, ethics, and who's really in control. I'm excited and maybe just a little scared. But hey, if this means I can send memes with my mind, I'm kind of in. Just don't send me your shopping list while I'm trying to nap, okay? So, would you guys connect your brain to the network? Is this the future you've been waiting for? Or a boundary we shouldn't cross? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm super curious what you think about all this. And if you want more deep dives into tech like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. See you guys in the future.